All right, guys, let's talk about Robert Greene's law number 32 of his 48 laws of power. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We get you on the grind and improve your mind as always. Today, we're going to be going over and reviewing Robert Greene's law number 32 of his 48 laws of power. So let's get started. The law is play to people's fantasies. The truth is often avoided because it is ugly and unpleasant. Never appeal to truth and reality unless you are prepared for the anger that comes for disenchantment. Life is so harsh and distressing that people who can manufacture romance or conjure up fantasy are like oases in the desert. Everyone flocks to them. There's great power into tapping into the fantasies of the masses. So it's like your average entertainment that we have today. It's it's the escape. Make people forget about the dangers and angers of the real world and the crazy stuff that's going on. So in certain situations, you can use this law to sort of have people kind of distract themselves from what's really going on, create stories and and create, if you're like a good storyteller, you can easily get people invested and they, you could take them away for, for good or bad, you know, but playing into people's fantasies could be used in certain contexts of situations to your advantage, especially if you have a high level of social intelligence and you're able to make up stories off the spot, or you're able to tell stories in a good way that gets people's attention, you can really rile people up and you can get people hyped just by being a, like a hype man by being a good storyteller yeah exactly and there's uh in the book there's a example a history example that would be more of like a negative use for it and so i'll go into it right now so back in early i guess i think you said 1500s is right just before the exploration era of europe venice was pretty much thriving but then because of exploration and because of all the atlantic neighboring the atlantic ocean neighboring countries started you know building their empires and being able to explore into the americas and stuff uh venice was losing their wealth and their reputation and everything like that they were losing their power within the uh powers of europe right so because of that a lot of the people were you know very anxious and they were very <clears throat> Uh, they wanted to be back into that state where they were, right? So they heard of a man who was like an alchemist and that can turn minerals into gold. And so they wanted to go and find this man to bring him in to then give the give Venice the wealth that they had again so then they can you know become what they were. And so when they found this man, he, you know, had, he was doing exactly what people had said about him. He was cre like creating gold or gold, du gold dust pretty much out of like little minerals and shit. And they were like, come to Venice and let's, you know, let's help us, like help us. And we'll, we'll give you a nice place and you'll live nice. And so he's like, cool, I will. So he comes and they give, they, the people of Venice mob him of like with gifts and all these good things because that they know they think that they know that he's going to give them gold and bring the the city and everything like that back to wealth and so this guy's living lavish he's chilling doing his thing but he doesn't do anything he doesn't start doing the gold stuff yet he 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 lets that hang out for a bit he doesn't really do too much he shows people some things that he can do, but it doesn't really he doesn't really do what he was asked of him. And so when people start complaining and start saying, hey, are you going to do anything yet? And then he tells them, hey, I have this idea that I want to do to give you guys all the wealth and give you guys more than what you're looking for. But it's going to take seven years because got to put it in this casket for like seven years. And when. It, when it's done in there, there's going to be a whole bunch. And so people, because of how he talked and how he how he uh, handled himself and everything with explaining the story, people bought into it and they were like, oh, my God, we should we we should let him do this and stuff. But then there were people that were like, no, we should not. We're pissed. He's taking way too long. And now he wants us to wait another seven more years while he's sitting in pretty much in luxury right now, not doing anything. And so because of those people yelling at him he's like nah screw it i'm leaving i'm gonna go and uh hang out with the duke over in this country and and he's gonna i'm gonna do stuff for him now because i know that he treats me right and so he does that he leaves and he goes over there but the thing is is that all of this of course 
is all fantasy. It's all a ruse. He does these. He does this trick with putting gold dust in like a little glass thing in his sleeve and puts it in the minerals. And how he was able to manipulate everybody is by being good buddies with people like the Duke or whoever who gives him money, which then has a notoriety through other countries to make them believe that he was an alchemist for then people like the people of Venice to then believe in that story for them, them to bring him in and give him the life that he wants. And then once all that money and all that stuff that he had when he got there is now gone because they're not going to give it to him. Now he gets pissed and goes and leaves and goes back to a country like that and gets more money from them because he is friends with all those people and they just give him money. And so he was able to keep up this fantasy and make people believe certain things that were not true. And now he, you know, was pretty much just doing that, just rusing, every, finessing everybody. If you can use this to your advantage, you can, you know, you could, you could either use it to get people to get distracted from the real world and you can use it to kind of like lower the tension, certain things, you know, or you can use it to, you know, in kind of a more sinister way. Like, you know, you can promise people and lie to them and promise things that, that are not really going to happen in order to get your way. You know, yeah, in order in, to get in a modern to do setting, things here. Yeah. in a modern setting, that's how this would work. Like this is from the like that example is from like the 1500s. Stuff like that won't happen. But nowadays, in the real world, things that uh, build fantasies are things like uh, Netflix and Disney Plus and those things like that, where they <clears throat> make you escape. Pretty much all the escapism, escape social media, right? And then when you have humans that do stuff like that, like a whole bunch of different types of influencers, especially influencers that try to uh, make you go into like these NFT things to which are pretty much just these people specifically are doing like scams, pretty much what they're doing. But they're trying to finesse you and they're trying to make you believe in the fantasy of that you're going to make money from this NFT thing that I'm trying to do. Join me. But it's really just a money grab for them to take your money and you not get really anything out of it. That is is the law of law 32 yes Scott. so you guys want to be careful what people promise you and, and and remember to stay in reality as much as you can try not to go too much into fantasy world because sometimes you might not make it back to the real world so if you guys like this law make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment below what you think about this law and give an example of your own life also you know subscribe to the channel as I hit the like button on the video you can donate to the cash shop link in the description below if you appreciate our work we put a lot of time and effort into this so if you want to support and with that said we're going to see you guys in the next video Woo.